So in the previous video, we talked about the different components of blood. We spoke about plasma and we also spoke about white blood cells. In this video, we are going to focus on the other two major components of blood, which are red blood cells and platelets. The platelets, white blood cells and red blood cells together are actually known as formed elements. And in this video, we are going to focus on red blood cells and platelets. First, we will start with red blood cells. So red blood cells are also known as erythrocytes. Erythro here means red. They are called so because of their characteristic red color. This is what gives blood its red color as well. The presence of the red blood cells is why blood looks red. Erythrocytes, like I mentioned, constitute about 45% of total blood. They are the second major component of blood after plasma. So, how do these red blood cells look like? They have a distinct biconcave shape. They look something like a flattened donut, basically. They have a biconcave shape. This biconcave shape is very important because it allows it to pick up a lot of oxygen, which is its major role. And also its small size and this shape allows it to pass easily through the blood vessels, through the capillaries and reach every single cell in the body. While it is being formed from a progenitor cell, like a stem cell, in the process of maturation of red blood cells, the nucleus is ejected out of the cell. So the mature red blood cell, the mature erythrocyte does not have any nucleus. It is known as a nucleate. This is important because this increases the space inside the cell for oxygen to be transported throughout the body. So that's why the red blood cells don't have any nucleus. Red blood cells appear red for a reason. It's because of the presence of this specific protein known as hemoglobin. Hemoglobin because heme means iron. And this is an iron containing protein. Hemoglobin has four iron centers, one, two, two, three, four. Hemoglobin is the protein that is involved in transporting oxygen throughout the body. This is why your parents and elders told you to eat a lot of spinach and green leafy vegetables because of its high iron content. That is very important to prevent diseases like anemia from occurring. Anemia is a condition in which there is an extremely low level of hemoglobin and RBC in the blood. So the main function of RBCs, like I mentioned, is to transport oxygen to all cells. RBCs are also involved in transporting carbon dioxide from the cells. So at the blood capillaries where there is exchange taking place, from one end oxygen is transported to the cell and from the other end carbon dioxide is picked up by the blood and is transported to the lungs, right? What do you think transports this carbon dioxide to the lungs? It is the red blood cells for the most part. Carbon dioxide can bind with hemoglobin and form something known as carboxyhemoglobin. And the red blood cells also have this enzyme known as carbonic anhydrase. This carbonic anhydrase converts CO2 to bicarbonate ions which is then dissolved in plasma and transported to the lungs. So each red blood cell has millions of hemoglobin or ion containing groups and each hemoglobin actually has four ion cores like I mentioned. So it's something like this and to each ion core one oxygen molecule can bind. So just imagine with one hemoglobin you can transport eight oxygen molecules. Your one red blood cell has millions of hemoglobin which means millions of oxygen molecules can be transported and there are millions of RBCs circulating throughout your blood at any given day which means just imagine the amount of oxygen that can be transported to all these cells. That is why red blood cells are very important. They perform the major function of transporting oxygen to all cells in our body. Next we will take a look at the other type of formed elements which are platelets. So platelets are involved in the clotting of blood. Say there is an injury and there is a break in the blood vessel and the blood is leaking out of the blood vessel. The injury could be internal as well. The blood is flowing inside your body or it could be external where the blood is exiting your body, is, is oozing out of your body. 
So what platelets do is that they come and clump up here at the site of this blood vessel injury and stop the blood from pouring outside. That is what is known as clotting of blood. So platelets are majorly involved in the clotting or coagulation of blood. We'll talk more about this process when we talk about the blood coagulation process. Platelets are actually not cells in the sense they're cell fragments. What do I mean when I say cell fragments? You see, there are something known as megakaryocytes. Megakaryocytes can be thought of as the parent cell for these platelets. So when these megakaryocytes mature, once they mature, they start to break up into smaller pieces, irregularly shaped smaller pieces. These smaller pieces are what are platelets. So platelets are not technically cells, they are cell fragments. They are derived from megakaryocytes. And like I mentioned, the function of platelets is to clot the blood vessels at injury sites. And once the platelet plug is formed at the site of injury, the clotting cascade is initiated. You see, just this platelet plug is not enough to properly stop the blood from pouring outside to close the injury site. You need another network or a mesh-like fiber on top of this platelet plug known as the fibrin mesh. And the fibrin mesh production can be initiated only when the platelet plug is formed. So that's another major function of platelets. It's to initiate the clotting cascade. And how do the platelets initiate the clotting cascade? By activating the different clotting factors. We learned about this, right? Factor 3, factor X and all that. So these clotting factors are activated, which initiates the coagulation or the clotting cascade. And eventually the fibrin mesh is formed surrounding the platelets, which make sure that blood does not escape out. So this is all about the different components of blood, plasma, white blood cells, red blood cells and platelets.